Hello, my name is Fraser Turner, and we'll be talking today about gravitational energy. So this is the first topic that we teach in the second half of our first year physics course. So when you're dealing with gravitational energy, this comes from the fact that near the surface of the Earth, everything experiences this force of gravity, which depends on the mass as well as the acceleration due to gravity that everything experiences. Now, when you're accelerating, the longer you accelerate, the faster you end up going. So I want you to imagine this thing right here. If I were to lift this up and drop it to the ground, very well to the table, it'll end with some velocity v. Now, if I end up taking it off the table and I instead drop it all the way to the ground, a bit of a mess, um, it ends with a much higher velocity. Uh, so that, um, you know, the further up it is, the faster it'll be going at the end. So potential energy is a measure of how fast or how much energy will something gain if I were to let it go at a particular place. And so that depends partly on this change in height or how far it ends up falling. Now, I want you to consider the situation of a rocket where we're not close to the surface of the Earth, uh, where we end up going further and further away. So as we get further, we gain in potential energy. So my question is, if I were to go infinitely far away and just continue going, am I going to gain an infinite amount of energy? Does that even make sense? Wouldn't we create a new universe or something? Anyways, before we get to the infinity of energy, um, I'd like to ask or talk about negative energy. So what would happen if we fell down into a hole? Well, given that expression for energy there of mg delta h, if our delta h is negative, so we fall down, we have an object that's down inside the hole, it would have negative potential energy compared to our reference point, which means that it would take energy to climb out. So. Um, that's all that negative energy means. Now, if we end up considering our infinite energy uh, conundrum, where we have something that's infinitely far away from everything else, this is indistinguishable from having something that's completely alone in the universe, because it's not interacting with anything because it's infinitely far from everything. Now, if I had something that was all alone and I just let it go, it wouldn't gain any kinetic energy. There's, there's nothing that's attracting it. It feels no force of gravity. So we define this as having a potential energy of zero. Now, <clears throat> if it somehow starts going closer to something that does experience gravity or produce gravity, then kind of the opposite to how the spaceship gained potential as it went up, this is gonna lose potential energy as it goes down closer to the thing that is producing this gravitational force. So we say that well, since we started with zero and we've lost some, that means that our potential is negative as we get closer. So <clears throat> using the fact that at the surface of the Earth, or at the surface of the uh, planet, uh, we have this negative potential energy. We can define it as some, you know, minus UR, so the surface uh, potential. It has to go from that negative value up to something that's zero when I'm infinitely far away. And so we know that uh, by doing some measurements that is proportional we're inversely proportional to the distance between the two objects. So if I draw a vector from the center of one to the center of the other, we know that the potential has to go as one over r. Now, we'll get to the exact form of that in just a minute, but the, the key idea here is that our gravitational potential energy is always going to be negative. That doesn't mean that it can't be, we can't get a positive change by going less negative, uh, but it does mean that gravitational potential is always negative. So here's another way of looking at things. Um, we can uh, look at the gravity that's producing or that's produced by something as um, well let's let's compress our uh, spatial dimensions into just x and y and in the third dimension we'll give the potential energy and so remembering that negative means that we're going into a hole we kind of visualize this as a hole uh, in this uh, that is created by the earth kind of sinking down into it so infinitely far away, we have no potential energy, and as the comet or whatever uh, goes further down into the hole, it'll start going faster and faster. And you'll notice that as, the, uh, as you get closer, the slope changes. And so that's given over here that the force of gravity is given by the slope of your potential as you change your position. Uh, so the change in potential energy divided by a change in the uh, distance between the two things. Now, through measurements and experimentation, we can get a formula for the force of gravity, which is given by this. And so comparing the formula for the force of gravity and how gravity is related to potential energy, we get a form uh, where UG is minus GMM over R. And in this case, little m would be the mass of the little thing, big M would be the mass of the big thing, and that G is a constant um, that gives us the strength of that force.